This is a resistant chestnut. It's taken from a tree that has grown after the, um, after the great fungus disease of North America and it appears to have resistant genes. So I was sent one nut, <laughs> one nut, and from one nut I've got this. Now, with this tree, I'm kind of babying it a little bit and I'm giving it a bit of fish emulsion. Like that's the old Aboriginal way of dealing with things like this, is plant putting a fish. a fish plant, a fish, that's yeah. right. A freshwater fish yes. or any kind of fish right under it. But anyway, grow, 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 yes. grow. <laughs> All of my seeds that I have here are able to withstand climate change and global warming. And they're able to withstand the, the, the problems of trying to sequester carbon, of trying to oxygenate by way of trees and by way of all kinds of other species. So I've set up a series of trials here and it's only the hardiest of the hardy grow here. And that's very important now for climate change because nobody has been doing that. This is the shagbark hickory here. And these were the trees that were used by the Aboriginal people for smoking meats and for smoking all kinds of things in their world. And it just slowly, slowly smoulders because the wood is so terribly dense. But the density of the wood means that it in, has an enormous demand for carbon dioxide. And when these forests were extant here, when they were here in North America, we did not have climate change. This is one of the many species that are so important that have to go back into our forests if we're really serious about really sequestering carbon dioxide. And if you eat the fruit of this nut, you, this is the shell and it breaks in like an orange into four and the, the hard shell is inside, um, there's no diabetes and it is a protection too for the brain. As the planet draws closer to the ecological point of no return, Diana is convinced that native trees and plants in the northern boreal forests are our last line of defense. It regulates the weather. It regulates the foundation of all foods in all oceans all over the world. It's a filtration comb that filters the air. It releases antibiotics, antifungicidal compounds that sweep the air in a continual sweep of cleansing and that clean air comes from the north, comes from the boreal mouth and swishes the whole global air mass clean. If we take that forest out, we will never be able to replace it. Never. It will not be possible to replace this. <laughs>